So here's a more FSM or more finite state machine example. Let's suppose we want to build a traffic light controller and we have two inputs or traffic sensors, TA and TB. They're true when there's traffic. So TA is a sensor on Academic Avenue and TB is a sensor on Bravado Boulevard and they say whether there's traffic or not. And we also have two outputs, the lights on Academic Avenue and the lights on Bravado Boulevard, LB. So if we were to look at our black box diagram, we'd have our inputs. We always have clock and reset, remember, for our FSMs. And we have our inputs, TA and TB, and our output, our outputs, LA and LB. And it turns out we're going to need to have multiple bits for each of those outputs. So LA will have to have multiple bits because we're driving um, a non-binary signal. It's just not, it, the light is not on or off. It's red, green, yellow. It has three possible values. So we'll need multiple bits. That's the hash mark here um, for both LA and LB. So our FSM um, operates like this when the, there's traffic on Academic Avenue. It's going to stay in with a green on the Academic Avenue light. So we have our states, which are circles. Here's our state. And we're going to have some transitions, which are arcs or arrows. And our outputs are listed within each of the state. So in this case, our output in the S0 state should be that Academic Avenue has a green light, LA is green, and Bravado Boulevard has a red light. And as long as there is still traffic in on um, Academic Avenue, so T sub A, remember I could have written T sub A equals one, but I'm just gonna make it simple and write T sub A. When T A is asserted, when T A is one, then stay in the S0 state. This S0 is the name of the state, so state zero. So as long as we have um, traffic on Academic Avenue, we're gonna stay in that state, state zero. But as soon as there's no more traffic on Academic Avenue, so TA goes low, or in other words, TA bar is true, then we're gonna go into another state, S1, and we'll start to transition the lights. We'll turn LA to yellow and LB will stay red. On the next clock edge, we'll go to the next state, S2, where LA will be red. So the Academic Avenue gets the red light and Bravado Boulevard gets the green light. So now traffic can flow on Bravado Boulevard, and as long as there's still traffic on Bravado, Bravado Boulevard, um, it stays in the S2 state. As soon as there's no more traffic on Bravado, Bravado Boulevard, then we go to the next state, the S3 state, state three, where LA stays red, but LB goes to yellow. So it starts to get ready to stop traffic on Bravado Boulevard. And then on the next clock edge, so each transition occurs on the clock edge, goes back to state zero, where Academic Avenue gets the green light and Bravado Boulevard has the red light. So now we can use our state transition diagram to fill in our state transition table also called a next, the next state table. So state transition table is also called the next state table because we're using the current state and the inputs to determine what the next state should be. And a note here that we're using um, S here um, to indicate our state, not to be confused with our state names, S0, S1, S2, and S3. Okay, so if we're in the S0 state, 
and TA is zero, doesn't matter what TB is, then we're going to go to the S1 state. So the next state should be, remember S prime means next state, should be S1. If we're in the S0 state still, and TA is one, then we should go stay in the S0 state, state. So the next state should be S0. If we're in the state um, S1 state, no matter what the um, inputs are, we should go to the S2 state. So the inputs are don't cares. If we're in the S1 state, and the next state should be S2. If we're in the S2 state, and there's no traffic on Bravado Boulevard or TB bar is true, so TB is low, then we should go to the S3 state. But if we're in the S2 state and TB is one, then we should stay in the S2 state. If we're in the S3 state, so we're just going state by state here, if we're in the S3 state, and it doesn't matter what the inputs are, right? there's no inputs on that transition arrow. If we're in the S3 state, next state should be S0. And so now we have our state transition table or next state table, and it is not encoded, right? We need to now encode or pick encodings for these states and then, um, and then, um, Right, equations for our next state bits. And so um, these state names are not the state bits. So S1, S0, S2, S3, those are the state names. So now we're going to encode these. We choose an encoding of, well, I'll write it over here, S1 colon 0 or S1, um, S1, S0. Let's choose, well, we need, we need at least two bits because we have four states. So we use two bits, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And you'll notice because we've cho chosen these state names, S0, the encoding for the bits is 0. S1, the encoding for the bits is 1. S, the name S2, the encoding for the bits is 2. And S3, the encoding for the bits is 3. And so now we have our encodings. And we can replace our um, names, our state names, with, with these encodings. So we have here, instead of S0, we'll put our state bits in, S sub 1, S sub 0. S sub 1 is sub 1 is not equal to state 1. Right? These are two different things. So S sub 1 is state bit 1. So S0 we'll replace with 0, 0 everywhere we see it state one with zero one or S one with zero one, S two with one zero and S three with one one. And same thing over here, S one is zero one, S zero is zero zero, um, one zero, one one, one zero and zero zero. So we're now just encoding um, our states and creating the encoded state transition table or encoded next state table. And now we can write equations for our next state bits. So we'll write an equation for S1 prime. We'll look at this column and find the ones. So S1 prime is equal to, well, S0, S1 bar and S0 and doesn't matter what the inputs are in, in that row, or we're doing summer products here, or S1 and S0 bar and TB bar, don't forget the inputs, or the last one that we could get, or S1 and S0 bar, and T, uh, sub T and B. And so we can see, well, let's see, 
Um, this one, we can easily see that we can use combining on these two terms, S1, S0 bar, T bar, T sub B bar, or S1, S0 bar, and T sub B. So we'd get equals S1 bar S0 or S1 S0 bar. These differ only in the TB term. So we combine those terms to get S1 S0 bar. And we'll notice that that's the XOR function. So this is equal to S1 XOR S0. sub Okay, so now we use the same process to find the uh, next state bit zero. So here's next state bit zero. We'll use sum of products again to find our equation. So S sub zero prime, state bit zero, uh, the next, next state bit zero. We're going to have our first one will be S1 bar and S0 bar and TA bar. So S1 bar and S0 bar and T A bar, or let's find our next one, S1 and S0 bar and T sub B bar. And so now we have our two next state equations and we can implement that in our circuit in our next state logic. And we do a similar process with our output table. Remember in our output table, the outputs in a more finite state machine are completely determined by the current state. So we only have our current state here on the left. We do not have our inputs on the left. In an output table, the outputs are completely determined by the current state for a more FSM. And so we here we have our states on the left, S0, S1, S2, S3, our different states here. And we just look at the outputs. Well, in the S0 state, LA should be green and LB should be red. In the S1 state, LA is yellow. LB is red. In the S2 state, LA is red, LB is green. And in the S3 state, um, LA is red and LB is yellow. And so we have our, um, our unencoded um, FSM. And now in addition to the encodings for our states, which we've already done. We have outputs here that can be either green, yellow, or red. So we need to encode them. We could have chosen different encodings, but um, here the encoding we're gonna use is to, well, with three different values, we need at least two bits. Green is encoded as zero, zero, yellow as zero, one, and red as one, zero. We could have chosen different encodings. For example, if each of the um, green, yellow, and red had a a wire that was tied to it, which would make sense, green, um, yellow, and red. So this would be one, zero, zero with three bits of encoding. This would be the zero, one, zero encoding, and this would be a zero, zero, one encoding. But again, for, the, for this example, this, this is a, a valid encoding too. Um, we'll choose the encoding of green being zero, zero, yellow being zero, one, and red being one, zero. So now we encode our output table. We replace our state names, S0, with their state bits or state encodings. So 0, 0 for that encoding. State 1 is 0, 1. State 2 is 1, 0. And state 3 is 1, 1. And green we replace with 0, 0. Red with 1, 0. Yellow, 0, 1 red one zero, red one zero, green zero zero, and yellow um, zero one.
and now we can write equations for our outputs. So LA sub 1, LA bit 1 is, well, this is equal to S1. LA sub 0 is S1 bar and S0, S1 bar and S0. L B1 is just S1 bar. Again, you put these in into a key map to, to minimize it, but LB1 equals S sub uh, 1 bar, and LB0 is S1 and S0. So now we have equations for our outputs as well, and we can use those to implement the output logic in our, in our circuit. So we, we're going to start with our state register. We have two state bits, S1 and S0. And uh, remember that the current state is on the right and the next state is on the left. Now we're going to implement our next state logic using our next state equations that we derived in the previous slides. So we have S1 prime state bit, next state bit one is going to be S1. We bring our current state around S1 XOR S0. S0 prime is S1 bar and S0 bar and TA bar, or there's our OR gate, S1 and S0 bar and TB bar. And now we're going to implement the output logic, which is determined in a more FSM completely by the current state. And we get our output logic given the equations that we derived in the, um, in the in the prior slide. So we have LA1 equals S1 here, LA0 equals S1 bar and S0, LB1 equals S1 bar, and LB0 equals S1 and S0. And so you can see that we have our Next state logic, next state logic determined by our current states and our inputs, and our output logic, our block of combinational logic that determines the outputs, is completely de determined just by the current state or the state of the system, S sub 1 and S sub 0. And we can do a, a timing diagram as well to see what our circuit does. And we can um, go through the timing, um, timing of our system and see that when the, we get our clock and our clock reset and inputs, and we see what the next state, current state, and outputs do. Well, if we're in the S0 state, then given our circuit, we would expect that we would go into at the next clock edge if, as long as TA is high, it stays in that state, but when TA goes low, it's going to transition to the next state, S sub 1 or the 0, 1 state, and so forth. So let's talk a bit about state encodings. So, so far we've used binary encodings where we use a minimum number of bits. So if we had four states, like in the last example, we need log base two of four, which is two bits. So log base two of the number of states, where n is the number of states. So for example, log base two of four is equal to two. Um, 
log base two and we and we log base two of five, for example, well, that doesn't turn out to be a, a nice number. So we take the maximum of it. Um, so the largest integer, you know, the next largest integer would be three. Anything up to eight would need three bits, right? We can't encode. Um, the easier possible way to think about, about it is how many bits do we need to um, to encode five values? Well, it can't do five values with two bits because we can only um, encode four values. So we need another bit or three bits. So anything up to eight states would need three bits. Once we pop over to nine, now we're going to need four bits. Up to nine to 16 states, we'll need four bits and so forth. So binary encoding is going to use the number, the fewest number of bits in our state encoding, and we've used that up until now. One hot encoding is, so this term hot means high, so we're going to have only one state bit that is hot or high um, uh, in any state. So if we had four states, for example, we would have four state bits. So this would be the S0 state, S1, state 2, and S3. And so now we have four state bits, S3 colon 0. This is S, the state, and S0 is a state name. So with one hot encoding, um, there's one bit per state, and only one state bit is high at once. This requires more flip-flops, more, more state registers, right? We need a four-bit state register instead of in binary, the binary encoding state, uh, binary encoding situation, a two bits of state or a two-bit state register. But often the next state in output logic is simpler if we use one-hot encoding. So let's do one-hot encoding for, um, for our last example where we had our, um, our traffic light controller. So now our state encodings are going to be, well, we're going to use uh, four bits of state, S3 to 0, and we'll have S0 being only state bit 0 is high, S1, state bit 1 is high, S2, state bit 2 is high, and S3, S sub 3, or state bit 3, is high. So now we have these encodings for our, for our state bits. Um, for our state, we're using one hot encoding. So now instead of S0, we'll have 0, 0, 0, 1. So that's the encoding we're using. The unencoded state um, transition table looks exactly the same as the as no matter what encoding you use. So S1 is, is 0, 0, 1, 0. S2 is 0, 1, 0, 0. S2 again. And S3 is 1, 0, 0, 0. And same thing on the right here. We use our one hot encoding instead of the binary encoding that we used before. And so now when we write equations for um, our next state, we're still going to use some products, but let me show, this is a common error. So S3 prime, state bit 3 prime, so next state bit 3, is going to be, well, this is the, the tempting thing to do, just straight sum of products. So S3 bar and S2 and S1 bar and S0 bar and TB bar. So that would be S3 prime. But... We know because of the way we encoded it, we chose one hot encoding, that if S2 is high, we already know by definition that these are low, that S3 is low, S1 is low, and S uh, sub zero is low. And so we don't need to include those in our equation, and we shouldn't, right? So our, our, our equation for S3 prime is just S2 well, yeah, we don't we don't need to include this information. It's redundant. We already know because of the way we encoded it that those are zeros, All right? If S2 is high, it's one hot encoding, so no, none of the other bits are high. 
So S3 prime equals S2 and TB bar. And let's do the next bits. S sub 2 prime is equal to, well, S1. S sub 1, don't care, is on the inputs. Or S sub 2 and TB. S sub 1 prime equals S sub 0 and TA bar. And our last one, S sub 0 prime, right over here, S 0 prime is equal to S 0 and TA, or S 3 and don't care as on the inputs. And so again, the common error is to include all of those state bits in our equation, but because of the way we encoded it, we only include the state bit um, that is high. So that's the common error there is to want to include all of those state bits S3 bar and S2 and S1 bar and S0 bar, but that would be um, incorrect, right? It would work, but it's not um, efficient, right? It uses too many, um, a larger gate than we need. So really we should write this as S2 and TB bar. And same process with the next, uh, the next, uh, next eight bits. And you'll notice from the state transition diagram, well, this kind of, you know, it makes sense. So S three prime, so S state bit three prime, right? We know that S sub three or state bit three, this is S. 3, 2, S3, S2, S1, S0. In state 3, S sub 3, state bit 3, is, is high. So S3 should be 1 when S2 is 1. In other words, you're in state 2. And TB is low. So our next state equations, we can double check them because they're Kind of an immediate translation of the state transition diagram. Let's look at another one. S2 prime, so S2 is going to be um, a, a next state if you're in state 1. In other words, state bit 1 is 1 is true. Or you're in state 2 and TB is 1. So state bit 2 is one and TB is high. Same thing for S1 prime. S1 is going to be the next state if you're in state zero and TA is low. S0 is going to be the next state if you're in state zero and TA is high or you're in state three. The current state is state three. And so an easy way to double check um, to double check those equations is to look at the state transition diagram. And so now we can implement our uh, finite state machine using our one hot state encodings. Well, we start with our equations. Remember never to include all of the, um, the state bits in our equations because of our encoding. Um, and we're going to start with our state registers. The process is the same, just our equations are different. So we start with our state register. In this case, we're going to have four bits of state, S3, S2, S1, and S0. And we're going to bring those state bits around. We can use them to calculate our next state. 
And we also have our inputs, TA and TB, TA and TB. And now we're going to calculate what our, our uh, next state should be. And so we can always connect our clock and our reset. And so we have S3 prime, S2 prime, S1 prime, S0 prime. So S3 prime is going to be a single AND gate, S2 and TB bar. Here we have an OR gate with S1 and an AND gate, S2 and TB. Here we have S0 and TA bar. And here we have an OR gate with S0 and TA and other values. So now we connect them. S3 prime is um, S2. So sometimes, again, I label these up here to help me remember, but they're not inputs there. Remember, they're being fed out from the state register. But we have S2 and TB bar with our equation for S3 prime. S2 prime is S sub 1 and or or uh, S2 and TB. And here we have um, for S1 prime, we have S0 and TA bar. And for S0 prime, Last one, S0 prime, we have S0 and TA or S3. And we could also write outputs, um, output equations. So we could have, here's our, I'll go ahead and go to the straight encoded version, S3 to zero, here are states. And our output, um, LA, 1 colon 0, LB, 1 colon 0. And remember, green, yellow, red, green was encoded as 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, red was 1, 0. And so our, here's our states, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, 0. This was S0, S1, S2, and S3. So in the S0 state, we want it to be green, red. So green and red is uh, 1, 0. S1, we want it to be yellow and red. S2, we want it to be um, red and green. And S3 should be red and yellow. And so we can have equations here. Let's see. So LA bit one is equal to, well, S sub three, S sub two, S sub two, or S sub three. LA0 is equal to S sub 1, state bit 1. LB1 is equal to S1 or, or S sub 0 or S1, S sub 0 or S1. And finally, um, LB sub zero is equal to just S sub three. And then we could, um, you know, get right the, uh, you know, implement that in a circuit over here on the right for our output logic, LA and LB. Okay, so we can now implement that here using our state bits to output LA 
and LB. Okay, so there's um, there's an error in this um, in this circuit, and let's see what happens when reset goes high. So if reset goes high as is, um, right? So we're gonna implement these equations in there for our, for our output logic. So let's see what happens if reset goes high. So reset when reset equals one. So we get a re this is a resettable flip flop. Reset goes one. Our state bits become all, all zeros. Gosh, that's not what we wanted, right? In the reset state, it should go to S0, but S0 is encoded as, right, state zero. We encoded that as zero, 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 one, right? S0, we encoded it as this, not all zeros. Well, we can still make this work. This is a common error here, but we need to make the bottom flip-flop a settable flip-flop and all the rest are resettable flip-flops. So when reset goes high, it's still tied to the set and reset inputs on those. Instead of getting 0, 0, 0, 0, we get 0, 0, 0, 1. And in fact, it does reset to, um, to S0 or the um, 0, 0, 1 state. 